Hey everybody, it's Ripley again, and today we're going to talk about using the unit circle to define trigonometric values as opposed to the geometric way that we've defined them in the, in the past. If you remember, if you recall, if I got myself a nice right triangle over here, and I throw my right angle there, and instead of an angle A, B, or C, I'm going to refer to it as kind of the unit standard for, for trig um, as theta, the lowercase Greek theta. And uh, according to this angle right here, this is the opposite side of the triangle. This is the adjacent side. And this is the hypotenuse. Again, this should just be some review. And then you had the mnemonic device, which was so, ka, and then toa. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to lose this way of, of thinking about trigonometric ratios because it's geometric and I can't put it on the Cartesian plane. I want it on the coordinate or Cartesian plane so that I can apply this more to function theory and things of that nature. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw myself a nice big fat unit circle and you'll come to understand why I want the unit circle. It works out better. Ooh, that's a bad circle, but that's all right. We'll make do. All right. Now, I'm going to pick a point on the unit circle, and it's a unit circle, so hopefully we realize that the equation of the unit circle, which is centered at the origin and has a radius of 1, is x squared plus y squared equals 1. Now, I'm going to pick this point right here. Excuse me. I'm going to pick this point right here, which we know is x and y, and watch what happens here. I'm not going to abandon my geometric history. In other words, I'm, I'm still going to use this idea of Sokotoa, but I'm going to build a right triangle right there, and I'm going to build an angle right here. All right. Now, do you notice that this length of this side of the right triangle is just x, and the length here is just y? And remember, the radius is 1, because it's the unit circle. Now, watch how nicely and neatly our trigonometric ratios fall out based on the fact that we pull it off of the unit circle. So if I want the sine of theta, sine of theta is simply opposite over hypotenuse, which in this case is y over 1. Cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, so it's x over 1. And tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent, which is y over x. Now I can simplify this to be simply y. And I can simplify this to be simply x. Isn't that cool? So on the unit circle, if I want the cosine of an angle, I simply need the x value of the point where the angle hits the unit circle. No matter where that angle hits the unit circle. So if it hits, let me change my color. Now I want it to change. In other words, if I've got an angle that slams into the unit circle, right there, then that point right here is going to have an x comma y. And the angle, the new angle, is going to be defined by that theta right there. Again, the sine of the theta is just the y value. The cosine of the theta is just the x value. And then the tangent is the ratio of, to, of the y to the x. Now, we're going to need just some new language. And you may have heard of these in geometry, but they're going to it's going to be a lot simpler to deal with on the Cartesian plane. Check this out. I'm going to come up with three new terms, and they're actually just the reciprocal ratios of sine, cosine, and tangent. If I do cosecant of theta, now this is pronounced cosecant, whoops, secant of theta. This is simply the reciprocal of the sine. So it's 1 over y. If I do secant of theta, this is pronounced, or excuse me, written secant of theta. And this is the reciprocal of x. And then if I want the cotangent of theta, this is pronounced cotangent of theta. And it's the reciprocal of tangent. Now, these six trig ratios are all that we have to work with in trig. There's nothing else. It's very, very simple. The all of trigonometry is built up from these six trig ratios. <laughs> Pretty simple, huh? Not so bad. 
Okay, once we've clearly defined what sine, cos, tan, cosecant, secant, and cotan are using the unit circle, let's try to grab some free values. All right, let's try and put this thing to work. See how well I can draw this right now. That's not bad. Still pretty bad, but it's not that bad. Okay, there are certain angles that are called quadrantal. It's a crazy word, quadrant. Okay, and a quadrantal angle just means that the terminal, the terminal side stops or lands on one of the axes. Axes. In other words, if I put an angle in standard position, I'm going to change my color here. If I put an angle in standard position, if, I, if my initial side is on the x-axis, which is always where it's supposed to be, a quadrantal angle would be an angle that stopped, that terminal side is on the upper side of the y-axis. Or, excuse me, let me change colors here. If I start it on the x-axis and I open it up through 180 degrees like this, then it would terminate on the x-axis. Another quadrantal, another quadrantal would be one that opened all the way around and landed on the negative side of the y-axis. Now remember from the last lesson, these angles are also coterminal with angles that stop, that if I were to make this this theta less than zero, I could make a quadrantal angle as well. All right. So again, a quadrantal angle is just where the terminal side, an angle in standard position, where the terminal side ends up stopping on one of the axes. So the positive side of the x, the negative side of the x, the positive side of the y, the negative side of the y, etc. So let's grab some free pieces of information here real quick. All right, I'm going to change this back to, my, back to my black. Think about this. What is the sign of a zero degree angle? Oops. What's the sign of a zero degree angle? Which we know is also the sign of zero radians. They're exactly the same. All right? Well, what does that mean? It means on the unit circle, it means my angle starts and stops at that point right there. Well, let's name that point. It's on the unit circle, x squared plus y squared equals 1. So I know that that is 1 comma 0. And watch what happens. I know that sine from over here, I know that sine is always y. So I know that the sine of a 0 degree angle or the sine of 0 is 0. What do you think the cosine of a 0 degree angle is? Well, cosine, as we see over here, is always the x value, so the cosine of 0 is 1. How about the tangent of 0? Well, again, it's just y over x, which is, you're probably starting to see, is sine over cos, but we don't want to let the cat out of the bag yet, but it's 0 over 1 or 0. Let's go through them all. Cosecant of a 0 degree angle. Well, now we run ourselves into a little bit of trouble. Here's y. I know that cosecant is 1 over y, but y is 0. So if I go 1 over 0, then we know that this is the empty set, or another way of expressing this is that it does not exist. Oops, is that it does not exist. If I go secant of 0, we know that the secant is 1 over x. So it's 1 over x. Remember, all I'm doing is using this point to grab my values. So this is 1 over 1, effectively known as 1. And then the, where are we? The cotangent of 0 is x over y. So x is 1, y is 0. Oh, we're in trouble again. This is the empty set, or it does not exist. Look at that. We got ourselves the six trig values for a 0 degree angle. Let's go ahead and play around with the other quadrant quadrantal angles really quickly. 